I've always thought gaming phones like this were a little bit pointless. They're too big, the cameras are a bit rubbish, and they just miss out on some everyday features like wireless charging and water resistance. Well, this is the new ROG Phone 8 Pro, and it actually goes a long way to fix a lot of these problems while still being the ultimate gaming phone. And I've got the new ROG Phone 8 Pro with me here. There's also a regular Phone 8. And with this, Asus are trying to pack in all the usual gaming extras into something smaller, sleeker, and just a lot better as an everyday phone. Question is though, has it worked out? Is this actually worth buying? Well, here's what I think. And if you do enjoy this video, a like and subscribe would be lovely. Well, versus the previous top dog ROG, the Phone 7 Ultimate, which I've got here, the Phone 8 feels all grown up and kind of serious. It's 9% lighter, 15% thinner with shrunk down bezels, and it makes a heck of a difference. This thing feels like a premium flagship phone. It's much easier to hold, and the build quality is fantastic. The 6.78 inch screen is brighter than ever, now at 2500 nits, with the same super smooth 165 hertz refresh rate, and a 720 hertz sampling rate for lower response times, all wrapped up in Gorilla Glass Victus 2. The only issue really is most games are still 60 or maybe 120 hertz at max frame rate, although actually you can use the 165 hertz for the home screen and apps, but to be honest, you're probably best off on auto mode, which can dynamically adjust the refresh between 1 and 120 to save you some battery. The triple camera setup has had a huge upgrade, including bigger sensors, and borrowed from their Zen phones, the fantastic 6-axis stabilizer for the 50 megapixel main lens. We finally get full IP68 water resistance and wireless charging, plus the 8 Pro gets this snazzy anime vision display, and it actually uses 341 mini LEDs with 20 preloaded context-sensitive animations, like the time, the battery percentage, photo countdown, music equalizer, or to show notifications. And I also kind of love that when it's off, the mini LEDs disappear completely. The only downside, really, is we've lost that color LCD from the previous phone and also the cooling vent from the 7 Ultimate, although the flip side is we do now get that water resistance. But at its core, this is still an ROG gaming phone, so as you would expect, we are getting proper flagship specs, including the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 processor, Wi-Fi 7, we have their famous air trigger haptic shoulder buttons, the speakers are fantastic, they're clear, they're bassy, among the best I've heard on any phone, although because they've shrunk the bezel, the top speaker is actually now up firing rather than front firing, but they have tuned it so you can't really tell. Let's go. And as usual, it supports Snapdragon sounds, so we get low latency, app text, lossless, and high-res audio support. And of course, you've got that 3.5mm audio jack for your wired headphones or mics. And you get AI noise cancellation for your mics, so your call or your stream quality is nice and clear. And if you fire up the ROG Armory Crate app, then you can put it in X mode for the best performance. But for the absolute best sustained performance, then you'll definitely want to plug in this Aeroactive Cooler X, which comes bundled with the Pro, although you have to buy it as an option with the regular Phone 8, and simply plug it into the extra USB-C port to keep your frame rates high and the phone cool. But we'll come back to this in a second. But for me, there's really three things that separate this as a gaming phone from regular smartphones. You've got the accessories like the Aeroactive Cooler, you've got the air triggers, and you've got the software with the Armory Crate and also the Game Genie overlay. So Armory Crate lets you change performance modes, although for max performance you'll want to use the X mode, but this will make it quite hot and also drain your battery much faster. You can also control the aura lighting, the anime vision, and also set the display and performance profiles. And with the Game Genie, you've got access to different settings and shortcuts, and you can also map the pressure sensitive air triggers to tap on the virtual icons on your screen, which can make games a lot easier to play. Although frustratingly, because we have this offset Type-C port, it means that controllers like the Backbone don't line up properly. It works, but it looks kind of weird. But in terms of playing games on the phone, which you're probably going to do because that's why you're buying a gaming phone, how fast is this thing? Well, in Geekbench 6, the ROG Phone 8 in its default dynamic mode was about as fast as my other Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 phones. I've got the iQOO 12 here. It does pull ahead in X mode, although not by a lot. In either mode though, the ROG Phone 8 absolutely steamrolls last year's ROG Phone 7, beating it by 30% in multicore and a massive 74% in the Vulcan GPU test. I mean, sure, it's pulling more watts, and that will, of course, affect the battery, which is also smaller this year, but it's a great way to have the extra power as an option. In Antutu, the Phone 8 was 31% faster than the Phone 7, and also slightly faster than the iQOO 12. In 3D Mark Solar Bay, which has some ray tracing elements, the ROG Phone 8 was 61% faster than last gen, and a decent 18% faster than the iQOO, which shows the difference X mode can make. Although things weren't quite so great in Wildlife Extreme, which is pretty much a 20 minute torture test, but in X mode, the extra wattage meant the ROG Phone 8 got really hot, meaning lots of dropped frames. 
Now, to be fair, it didn't get this hot actually playing games in X mode, but I would probably say dynamic mode is your best bet for longer gaming sessions. In War Thunder, the ROG Phone 8 comfortably maxed out the 120 FPS frame cap, whereas the 7 couldn't quite get there, and also was about 15 to 20 FPS ahead with ray tracing turned on, although RT isn't that impressive in this game, so I don't normally have it turned on. I also tested the very demanding Honkai Star Rail, which is a kind of follow-up to Genshin Impact, which looks fantastic, although it is limited to 60 FPS on Android. My iPhone has a 120 FPS option, so while this may be the gaming phone, there are certain advantages and game optimizations for playing on iPhone. But still, I'm maxing out all the settings across the board and getting that 60 FPS. And with all these gaming extras, the great screen, the great sound, Wi-Fi 7, this is also kind of the best phone for streaming games from the likes of GeForce Now or Xbox Cloud Gaming. But what about cooling and does it throttle? Well, after half an hour of playing demanding games in X mode, the temperatures never went over 39 degrees Celsius and it was still comfortable to hold, although it does idle around 8 Celsius hotter than last year's Phone 7. However, if you grab the Aeroactive Cooler X, which is also a $99 accessory for the regular Phone 8, this one is smaller and lighter and you get more efficient cooling and a quieter fan, with the idea being this keeps the phone cool so clock speeds can stay high, meaning fewer frame drops and less, well, jankiness. Plus it has two physical air triggers, a headphone jack, a Type-C port, RGB and a kickstand. And the good news is it works, especially when you're in X mode. In 3D Mark, the frame rate was much more stable, with minimum frames up 84% overall and the lowest loop score up 18%. I even got a 3.5% boost in Antutu. And so you'll probably want to play with this for longer gaming sessions and if you plan to run it in X mode. For shorter gaming sessions, it didn't really make a massive difference, although I did get a couple of extra FPS in War Thunder with RT and the phone did feel cooler overall. So far so good then, but I think the main drawback with this year's new Phone 8 is that we are beginning an 8% smaller battery versus last year. Although ASUS reckon their optimizations mean it should only drop by around 2%. And in my YouTube test, the ROG Phone 8 Pro lasted a pretty impressive 13 and a half hours, although last year's ROG 7 Ultimate and also my other Snapdragon 8th Gen 3 phone, the iQ12, lasted a good 25 to 30% longer. And that's despite the latter having a smaller battery. So battery life is a little bit more compromised this year. I got about three and a half hours of Genshin Impact using the dynamic mode, although this was more like two hours 45 in X mode, but in less demanding games, I reckon you get over four hours, and also the 65 watt hypercharger means you can go from zero to 100 in about 39 minutes. So performance is a decent step up, the battery is a little bit of a downgrade, but I actually reckon the most significant improvement this year is in the camera department. Now the 50 megapixel main lens gets a bigger sensor and also the very impressive 6 axis stabilization alongside a 30 megapixel ultra wide which also gets better image quality and for the first time on an ROG phone we have a telephoto lens giving us a 32 megapixel 3 times optical zoom and up to a 30 times AI zoom. And also up front the 32 megapixel selfie gets better low light performance. The standouts are this 50 megapixel main camera, which gets you detailed and nicely exposed shots, although it can occasionally look a little bit over-processed, just not quite as natural as other flagships. As for portraits, it is detailed, although perhaps a little flat looking sometimes. I did find skin tones were a bit too warm, and again, we had that more processed look, even versus last year's phone. It's okay, just not great. But I think my favorite lens is the new kit on the block, the 3x telephoto with OIS, which actually pulled out the most detail, as you can see on this suit of armor. It is pretty impressive. However, the ultrawide does struggle with detail and noise, especially in lower light, although in good lighting it does a good job. Low light shots were great using the 3x lens, but the main lens can look a bit smudgy, although it is nicely exposed. And the apparently lossless 2x mode, which is cropped from the 1x and then enhanced, doesn't exactly look lossless to me most of the time. And unless it's improved with future updates, I would stick with the main 1x or the Telephoto 3x. But the best bit has to be video. It is much improved this time around. Versus the ROG 7 Ultimate, the 8 is so much smoother, thanks to the new 6-axis stabilization, which they've borrowed from their Zen phones. We also get far less annoying exposure changes with more detail, better colors, and less noise. It's still not as crisp as top-end flagship smartphones, but it is a big improvement. Let's be heading off! My biggest criticism though of this phone is that ASUS are only promising two OS updates for this, although four years of security. Most phone companies are now offering three, four, I mean Samsung's even up to seven years of full OS updates, and so just two years is disappointing for a flagship phone. 
As for the competition, well, I think the Red Magic 9 Pro is probably its closest rival. It gets a bigger battery, faster charging, and a beefier cooling system, although it does max out at 120 hertz and a less bright 1600 nits. We don't have that water resistance, and I don't think the cameras are as good. Otherwise, you'd still do very well with any other flagship Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 phone from OnePlus, Xiaomi, iQ, or of course the new Samsung Galaxy S24. But while the performance may be similar, you are missing out on some of those specific gaming features. So there you have it. The ROG Phone 8 is a terrific gaming phone. It's also much easier to live with this time around, thanks to water resistance, wireless charging, and much improved cameras. The truth is though, there aren't really that many Android games that need this kind of power, but really it's those extra gaming features that make the difference here. But I would love to see more demanding console level games come to Android like we're seeing on the iPhone. It is also quite expensive. The base ROG Phone 8 starts at $1,100, although for just hundred more, so $1,200 you can get the Pro, which offers double the storage. We have the anime vision display and also this very nice matte sparkly phantom black finish. But then the one I have here with one terabyte of storage and a massive 24 gigs of RAM, the Pro Edition, it's $1,500. Ouch. But what do you think? Would you be tempted to buy the ROG Phone 8? And also if you did pick up one of these, what's the first game you would play? Let me know in the comments below.